Okay. Good morning, everybody. This is Pentecost Sunday. Please stand for our Pentecost hymn, Hail the Festival Day. festival day blessed day that are hallowed forever day when the Holy Ghost shone in the world with God's grace lo in the likeness of fire among those who await his appearing he whom the Lord foretold suddenly swiftly descends. Hail the festival day, last day that are hallowed forever. May that the Holy Ghost shone in the world with God's grace. Your Father, He comes with sevenfold mystical offering, pouring on all human souls infinite riches of God. Hail the festival day, blessed day that are hallowed forever. Day when the Holy Ghost shone in the world with God's grace, part for him God, his chosen apostles, preach to the ends of the earth. Christ when in his wonderful world. Hail the festival day, blessed day that are hallowed forever. Day when the Holy Ghost shone in the world with God's grace. Praise to the Spirit of life, all praise to the fount of our being. Light that does lighten all light, life that all does abide. Hail the festival day, blessed day that are hallowed forever day when the Holy Ghost shone in the world with God's grace Alleluia Christ is risen, the Lord is risen Alleluia. Almighty God to you all hearts are open all desires known and from you no secrets are hid Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, 
by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. The lessons for Pentecost Sunday. The first lesson in from, is from Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as on fire, appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they said, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia. Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. 
All were amazed and perplexed, saying one to another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is not what's spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. We will read portion of Psalm 104 responsively by verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. Is in wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There move the ships, and there is that Levitian, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them the food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to the dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, so that you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and in the world without end. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And the God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, When the advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now, I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I'm going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear, bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine, and he will declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. you to join me in this prayer for invocation of the Holy Spirit while you're still standing. Come, O Holy Spirit, come as holy fire and burn in us. Come as holy wind and cleanse us within. Come as holy light and lead us in the darkness. Come as holy truth and dispel our ignorance. Come as holy power and enable our weakness. Come as holy life and dwell in us. Convict us, convert us, consecrate us until we are set free from the service of ourselves to be your servants in the world. Amen. Please be seated. In chapter 11 of the book of Genesis, we learned that at one time the whole world spoke the same language. It so happened that as they moved out to the east, the people came upon a plain in the land of Shinar, and they settled down there, and they said to one another, come on, let's build bricks and, and fire them as well. And so they used brick and stone and tar for mortar, and they said, let's build ourselves a city and a tower that reaches all the way to heaven. 
Let's make ourselves famous so we won't be scattered here and there all across the earth. And God came down and he looked over the city and the tower that the people had built there and God took one look and he said, one people, one language, why this is only the first step. No telling what they're going to come up with next. They'll stop at nothing. Come, we'll go down there and we'll garble their speech so they won't understand each other. And then God scattered them from all over the world and they had to quit building their city and that's how, they, how it came to be called Babel. Because there, God turned their language into Babel, and from there, God scattered them from all over the world. And so it was for thousands of years until God decided to ungarble the Apostle's speech. When the Feast of Pentecost came, that's when it happened. When the apostles were all together in one place, and without warning, there was a sound, it was a strong wind, it was like a gale force wind, and it filled the whole building, and nobody knew where it was coming from. And then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks. And they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. Now, there were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then devout pilgrims from all over the world. And when they heard the sound, they came there on the run. They wanted to know what was going on. They heard one another. But they heard it in their own mother tongues. And when they heard that, they were just blown away. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on. And they kept saying, aren't these guys Galileans? How come we're hearing them in our mother tongues? How come we understand them? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Visitors from Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and parts of Libya, immigrants from Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, they're speaking our languages describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make heads or tail of it. How did it all happen? Now, do you think all of those listeners suddenly became fluent in conversational Galilean? <laughs> Not likely, no. So, were the apostles suddenly speaking in multiple languages all at the same time? No, that would be Babel. We just learned that that was a different thing. What happened was the Holy Spirit filled the apostles with a mighty power so that their proclamations could be understood by everyone. Look, we know Adam and Eve spoke the same language, right? They had to, as well as their descendants, their kids did, right? Until God garbled speech into different languages and scattered people all over the globe. And on Pentecost, God reversed the decision of Genesis 11 so that the good news could be shed and spread throughout the world and the gospel could be preached to the ends of the earth. Wow. That's a big deal, isn't it? And even then, in the midst of this extraordinary event, there were critical skeptics. There always are, aren't there? They're drunk on cheap wine. And that's when Peter stood up, backed by the other 11, and spoke boldly and urgently. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this straight. These people aren't drunk. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. And then he launched into a very familiar passage. This is what happened with the prophet Joel announced what would happen. Dennis, can you bring me up? Hello, hello. hello. There we go. A little more. So this is what happened. He stands here, he says... This is what the prophet Joel said was going to happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy and your daughters. Young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And when the times comes, I will pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they will prophesy. And I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black, the moon blood red before the day of the Lord arrives. The day of tremendous and marvelous and whoever calls out to help for me, my God will be saved. 
And just like that, the church was born. The Holy Spirit had been sent to the faithful, not just for the apostles, but for us as well. They were born again. No, not born again. Born. Not born again. You know, back in the 1800s, especially in the Deep South, people would never say the word born again. They didn't. People would say, they describe that personal relationship with Jesus this way. They say, I was seized by the power of great affection. I love that. Seized by the power of great affection. The initiative of Almighty God and the explosion within the human heart when Jesus becomes Lord. Seized by the power of great affection. A visceral description of the phenomenon of Pentecost. Authentic conversion, the release of the Holy Spirit. You see, when we do something in the name of Jesus, great power is unleashed. We're flung across communities everywhere, the nation, the world, with the release of the Holy Spirit. We become like God's glitter. We're like glitter. Mingling and sparkling amongst ordinary life. Showing God's love is not all that ordinary but radical and life-changing. We're like those trick candles on a birthday cake. You know, the ones that you blow out, but they just keep coming back again and again and again. That's like us. We keep coming back and shining the light of Christ wherever we are, again and again and again and again. Think about this. Where do you see yourself as God's glitter? Where do you see it? We're called to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. We all affirmed it during the bishop's visit. Remember that? When we were asked the questions, you remember that? Yes? yes. Do you remember it? Have you forgotten? Do you remember it? Yes? No? Yeah? You're pretty quiet. Are you asleep? <laughs> kind of asleep? You're kind of asleep, really? Okay, let's do it. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Yeah? And will you seek and serve all Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Yes. Yeah. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Yes. Yeah, you said we will with God's help, right? With God's help, we will. When the Spirit moves in our own lives, one reaction we have is to be perplexed. Okay, what do I do with this? Like some of the people in that reading from Acts. The other reaction is to kind of sneer, is to disbelief, this can't be happening to me. Like some of the other people in that reading. You see, because human minds can't begin to grasp what God is doing, even when we're in the midst of something magnificent that God's doing. Like those in the crowd. It's still true in this day and age. We want to put God in a little box. We, we want a nice, tidy, neat God. One that we can understand. Maybe even control a little bit. That would be nice, wouldn't it? But God doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit blows where it will. And it cannot deny it. And we cannot stop it. It's going to do what it's going to do. And you have no control over it. Face it. And sometimes we're going to be perplexed. And sometimes we're going to be downright uncomfortable. But always, always, the Spirit is going to be pouring out upon us. That's what we pray for. And that's what happens. To proclaim God's glory. That's why it happens. It's not so that we can get rich or be more comfortable. It's so we can proclaim God's glory. It reveals to us that we proclaim God's glory. Has the Holy Spirit blown like the wind in your own lives? Can you think of a time when it's come like a violent wind, upset things, move things around, change things? We all know people hate change, but has it happened? It's happened to me. Yeah. Came to me in the middle of the night and said, hey, I think I, you ought to be a priest, Rob. Yeah, right. <laughs> you kidding me? <laughs> I'm real happy in my job. I like my career. I don't want to turn everything upside down. I'll have to move. I'll have to quit my job. Everything's going to go upside down. Think I should do that? How has God put you in a place where you had to make a change in your life and you were terrified and you didn't do it? You just backed off. No, no, I'll play it safe. I'll play it safe. You see, the Holy Spirit will move into your life and he will say things to you that you might not want to hear. Because, see, he has things he wants you to do that you don't think you're qualified to do. 
But God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. You don't need to know whether you can do this or not. You just need to know that he's called you to do something special and that you can accomplish it through him. You need to be prepared for it. You need to know that the next time God nudges you on the shoulder, to be ready for it, to be prepared for it, so that you can continue with his help through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus and help spread this wildfire of God's love in the broken and hurting world that needs it so desperately. You see, this is our commission. We are commissioned to do this. This is our faith. This is what it means to be a new creation in Jesus Christ. This is Pentecost. This is the birth of the church for us. And we are that church. But in order to do that, we have to call the Holy Spirit to come to us. Earlier today, we sang this song. It's called Breathe. And the the words are, this is the air I breathe, your holy presence living in me. And every time I hear that song, I just get filled with the holy presence of God because I I know that I'm breathing in God's presence. God breathed the holy presence into his apostles. He breathed it into them. They didn't do anything until the breath of God filled him, filled them with his presence. And today, I'm asking you to take a breath in and breathe in the presence of God today. Breathe in his presence. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with thee I will one will or do or to him do breathe on me breath of God till I am holy thine till all this Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, one one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel for the prayers of the people. our prayers <clears throat> today let us continue to pray for the Episcopal Church of the United States and also for the country of the United States in general form 3 father we pray for your holy Catholic Church grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Justin, our bishop, Father Rob, our priest in charge, Father Bill, and other ministers. We pray for all who govern and all authority in the nations of the world. Joseph Biden, our president, Ron DeSantis, our governor, and Shannon Martin, our mayor. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Martha of Sepian, Winifred Rodney. Perpetual son. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. And ask your prayers for the sick especially Aldit, Arianne, Althea, Arlene, Austin, Beverly, Blossom, Brashad, Caitlin, Calliope, Caroline, Charlene, Chuck, Cleon, Crystal, Curtis, Cynthia, Debbie, Deborah, Dido, Delroy, Dennis, Dwayne, Desiree, Doris, Estella, Father Bill, Faye, Gail, George, Gloria, Gianni, Handel, Hazel, Herman, Ivy, Jelani, Jamie, Jason, Jennifer, Jessica, Joey, John, Kate, Keith, Kirk, Kyle, Laura, Leandus, Laser, Lena, Leroy, Linda, Lisa, <coughs> Lloyd, Lorraine, Lou, Martha, now departed, Mary, Marianne, Marlene, Melrose, Michael, Modesta, Mariah, Obi, Patricia, Pearl, Peggy, Phyllis, Priscilla, Randolph, Reverend Tracy, Rona, Richard, Rose, Roy, Ruby, Ruth, Sean, Sean, Shirley, 
Serena, Stafford, Stephanie, Suzanne, Tamar. Tatania, Terry, Thomas Smith family, Terry, Trey, Verona, Vesta. Victor, Vivia, Wayne Jr., William, Wilmer, Winston, Yvonne. We pray also for the men and women in our armed forces, saying, Almighty, Almighty God, God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping, keeping all the men and women of our armed forces, armed forces at, at home, home and, and abroad, abroad, especially Ashley, Omar, Omar Pierre, and William. William. Defend, Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. grace. Strengthen them, them in their trials and temptations. Baby. Give, Give them, them courage to face the perils that beset them, them and, and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are only sorry We humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Things with the old Lord. No. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. You may be seated.
Eucharistic Prayer C on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. 
and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them in your glory their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his, disciples, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praise us, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we 
forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for Lord is the kingdom and the power and the glory for her. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <coughs> body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the cup of salvation, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Well, we have any visitors? We have visitors today? A couple? Hey? Hey? No? Ah, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Come join us for coffee hour afterwards, or you can say hello. We'd love to talk to you some more. Uh, coffee hour is, uh, you know where it is. Hey, thanks for wearing red. You guys showed up in red. This is great. Uh, our healing service, our last healing service for the season uh, will be this Thursday. We will suspend healing services for the summer. Uh, taking a break from that. Also, we'll suspend our Bible study classes uh, for the summer. So this Thursday will be your last chance to get one in at 10.15 uh, for the healing service and then at 11 o'clock for our Bible study. It's kind of a wrap-up class for the end of the year. We will resume in September. And uh, uh, in September, we're going to be studying the book of Genesis. So where it all began. And Digging into that. There's some really interesting new stuff about Genesis from archaeological exploration and so things like that. We've learned a lot, new, a lot of new stuff. So Genesis in the fall. So I'm looking forward to that. That should be good. The Gospel Revival concert is the 23rd of June. Check with Claudette. She has tickets. So if you're interested in who they are, you're, talk, you're going to have a bus go over, I believe. So if you're interested in going, check with Claudette so that we know how big a bus to get so that we can go over and help support those folks at um, Blessed Redeemer. Uh, next week is Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday. Um, Trinity Sunday is a big deal. We just had a big celebration celebrating the 60th anniversary of Father Bill's ordination. Father Bill was ordained to the diaconate on Trinity Sunday. He was ordained to the priesthood on Trinity Sunday a year later. It's a very meaningful Sunday for him. And a long time ago, long before the, we even announced that there was going to be a, a big party, he said, I said, what Sunday do you want to do? And he said, I would like Trinity Sunday. And I said, oh boy, I hate to preach on Trinity Sunday. <laughs> And so I get a respite, so I will be with you next week, but Bill will be your celebrant and preacher. So do join us for that very special occasion when we celebrate his 60th. And uh, I, is there any, anything else that I need to announce? Claudette, you got anything? No. Okay. Birthday blessings. Who's got a birthday? Oh, Leandis has something. Yes, Leandis? I'm doing You're doing birthday? Okay. Look at Leo. And it's mom's birthday, huh? Yeah, it will be. It will be? On the 24th. On the 24th? Your birthday? No. Oh, oh. This thing has hardly anything. I took this top one out so I could get set up. I got so now. Let's pray together. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday to you. You. Happy birthday to you. And to you, Judy, too. There we go. Okay. Any wedding anniversary blessings this week? Congratulations. Please applause. The combined age of 27. 
No? Traveling mercies. Anybody traveling? Yeah. Where are you headed? New Orleans. New Orleans. <laughs> Nolans, as they say. Nolans, yeah. <laughs> Together? O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. You have one more announcement? Hmm? Okay. I trust that um, you have all heard the message from the sermon. And in response to that, we will be having a meeting on the 25th, that is this Saturday, on, um, for the brothers of St. Andrew. Fortunately, it's only for the men. <laughs> So um, this, is, this is addressing all the men in the church. So on Sunday, we have a meeting at 12 o'clock in the house of, thank you. 12 o'clock? Yeah. 12 o'clock. Where? Harrison Hall. Harrison Hall. Don't miss it. Yes. There you go. Guys, show up for this. It's important. Um, Hazel and Aquinda, you inform your spouses accordingly. Yes. yes. Churches who have men's groups that are active thrive. They grow like crazy. So, don't just leave it up to the women to do this job, guys. Come on out. Yes, kickoff of the Brotherhood of Santa. And it's a good organization. I've been a member for many, many years. I would recommend it highly. Any others? Please stand for our procession into the world. Rejoice, ye pure in heart. Jesus and Jesus and praise Your love is and your way Your love is the key Rejoice, 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 give that and sing the angel choir with all our saints of earth pour out the strength of joy and with true rapture noblest birth rejoice 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 give thanks and your clear hosanna's raise and alleluia's love while answering echoes of orange flow like reef on incense cloud Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Yes, on through life's long path,
still chanting as he goes from youth to age by night and day in gladness and in woe rejoice 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 give thanks and sing Lift your standard high, still march in firm array, as warriors through the darkness talk, till dawns the golden day. Rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice, give thanks, and sing. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each out of every day. No, no in pain, steadfast, strong, and true. No, he will guide you in all. So all the world can see God will be there Watching from above Oh, now in peace In faith Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.